Spoiler alert, stay tuned for the end of the video to see how long this A free 2400 watt power station has been powering my full size fridge. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, Outdoor Prepper. This is the A free P280. It's a 2048 watt hour power station. And this is the size where backup power stops becoming theoretical and starts becoming real. Let me just take a still shot of the front so we can just take a look at it real quick. I only want to spend maybe 30 seconds going over the specs here because there's a lot more important information that I want to go over as opposed to specs. Just looking at the front very quickly, we've got your typical car 12 volt DC outlet. We have below that a 12 volt 25 amp outlet as well. And then we have two USB A's. And what I really like about this, there are four USB C's because most devices today run on USB C. There are less and less USB A devices. We have a light, we have a power button, and then we have a really nice screen. And that is basically the front of the unit. On the side of the unit, and I'll post a picture as well, we have a place for the AC input. I like that it is just a typical computer style plug. That is excellent. I hate when power stations have proprietary plugs. And then we have two DC inputs. They're XT90 inputs, and you can input a total of 1200 watts. So that's really, really good on the input on the side. Coming around to the other side of the unit, we have four AC outlets, and then we have what I love, which is a TT30 receptacle, and then we have what's called an output, and that is basically an input, so you can hook up another expansion battery. So that is just a quick spec teardown on the A4 unit. But what I really wanna go over is I wanna explain to you why a 2048 watt hour battery on an inverter, which is basically what this is, it changes the game because you can actually run stuff overnight, both quietly and indoors. Most people either buy the wrong size power inverter or they use it completely wrong. So instead of going over boring specs for the rest of the video, I wanna to explain to you what this can actually do and I wanna bust a couple of myths and I wanna explain who this is good for and maybe who should not buy this power station because like everything, there are some folks that this is gonna be the wrong power station for. And I'm not talking about the brand, I'm talking about this size power station. It doesn't matter who makes it. It could be Afri, it could be Jackery, it could be any of the brands. If you're looking at this from the wrong lens, it may not be the right unit for you. If you're gonna go camping, carrying around a 50 pound, 2048 watt hour battery pack is probably not gonna be the right thing to do. If you just wanna charge a few cell phones, this is, yeah, it's gonna do that. You can charge a cell phone for a month, but this is not the right unit for that. A unit like this, that this size and this capacity, it takes you to the next level. It allows you to go to bed at night and plug in your refrigerator and know 100% that this is going to run the fridge overnight. This is obviously not a unit that is going to power your entire house. If you think you're gonna run your sauna, your jacuzzi, your pool heater, your central air, this is obviously not that unit. What this unit is for, and a unit of this size, it takes you up to the next level from your typical 1000 watt hour battery. Once you reach the 2000 watt hour level, you can very comfortably say, I'm gonna plug in a couple of lights around the house. I'm gonna run some extension cords. We're gonna have a light in the living room. We're gonna have a light in the bedroom. We're gonna have a light in the kitchen. We're gonna have a light in the hallway. And that immediately is going to prevent injuries because nobody's gonna trip in the dark and fall over and get hurt. Then you're gonna plug in your fridge and you're gonna comfortably run your fridge at least 24 hours with a unit of this size. Then you're gonna say, well, I wanna do some cooking. I wanna do some basic things around the house. You can absolutely use this to power a microwave. A microwave takes a lot of power. It takes 1,000 watts, 1,500 watts. It depends on the microwave you have. But you're just using it in a burst. You're using it for a minute. You're using it for two minutes. Something like this will have no problem at all powering the microwave. Now, maybe you wanna get into like a toaster oven, and that's where things get a little tricky. You can definitely power a toaster. You can definitely power a coffee maker but those devices have heating elements. And again, you use them sporadically. So you wanna toast something, you wanna quickly heat something up, you wanna quickly make a pot of coffee. This can do that, no problem. But where people kind of get confused is they look at the power station and they say, oh, this has a 2,048 watt hour battery. That's a really big battery. This has a really big inverter. This is rated for 2,800 watts. Yeah, that's the, the max wattage of the inverter. If you're gonna run at 2,800 watts, you're gonna deplete this battery in less than one hour. So that's not where you wanna be. You don't wanna be at the maximum. 
you want to be kind of somewhere in the middle or a little bit lower because then you have a long runtime and you have more capacity. So like a space heater, for example, if you have no power and you're going to be using a space heater, a portable power station can do that, but that is not what I would recommend. If you're running space heaters, use a generator. The generator will just continuously provide that power. It's going to do that for as long as you have fuel in the generator. If you run a space heater on a power station, regardless of the brand, you're going to deplete that battery very, very quickly. So if your space heater is pulling 1500 watts, in less than two hours, your battery is dead. Now, a lot of people look at power stations and they say, I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna replace my generator. That's a little bit of a myth, but not entirely. So here's a really good use case scenario. People buy a power station and what is the duration of most power outages? Generally speaking, unless you live in you know, hurricane territory where you're gonna have a hurricane and you know your power is gonna be out for probably a minimum of a week or maybe in tornado alley and God forbid you may lose the whole home. But for most folks around the country, what happens is there's a storm, a tree branch falls down, a squirrel gets electrocuted by climbing on a wire, a car crashes into a telephone pole, knocks the wires down, there's some type of surge. Most power outages are several hours. Generally speaking, short of a storm or a terrorist attack, your power outage does not go on for a week or two weeks, at least not here in the United States. So for a shorter duration outage, let's say, one hour to maybe 10 hours or 12 hours. Something like a 2048 watt hour power inverter or power station is the optimal unit. You can keep the lights going, you can charge your phones, you can run the Wi-Fi, you can run a computer, you can watch some television, and you can go to sleep at night knowing that you still have more reserve power and it's going to continue to run the fridge. The food is expensive, so whatever is in that fridge if you had a 24 hour blackout with no power, you're gonna lose several hundred, if not a thousand dollars worth of food. That is going to pay for whatever power station you get on the first time you use it. Now, when I said earlier that I think a generator paired with the power station really is the ultimate pair or couple, I really mean that. And I've made other videos about this as well with other generators and other power stations. But hear me out, here's a short example. Car crashes into a telephone pole. In my area, Con Edison is the utility provider. So they're gonna come out and say, okay, yep, that's a big problem. We're gonna get this fixed, but it's probably gonna take 24 to 48 hours. So that is not a long duration power outage but at 48 hours, you're probably going to have exhausted this battery. And now, you're, again, you're not gonna have light. Your food might start spoiling in the refrigerator. You may not be able to you know, make coffee or whatever it is that you wanna do. If you had a portable generator, a small one, I'm not talking about a whole house unit that's gonna cost you another $20,000. I'm talking about a small 2000 watt unit, 2500 watt generator. What you do is you run the power station until it starts to get low. So you've made it through the first 24 hours, maybe you're at hour 30 right now, and you're like, okay, I'm only at 5% capacity left. What you do is you start the portable generator outside, you plug it in, and power stations, almost everyone on the market today has what's called pass-through power. So as your power station is running and it's still powering all your devices, you can charge it at the same time. And these power stations charge up very quickly. So this A-Free P280, and I tested this obviously when I charged it up, it has an app and in the app you can go over the different settings of input charge. So you can charge at, I think it's roughly 600 watts, 900, it's a little bit over a thousand, and then this can go up to 16, 1700 watts I was pulling up. Something like that is great because you start the portable generator, you set this to the max charge speed, and in a little bit over an hour, maybe two hours, you are fully charged. And then you can kill the generator, put it away, and you're back to quiet, reliable power, and you've used almost no fuel. And there's something else that I didn't mention, and I really should, and I'm gonna throw the image back up on the screen here as I turn it around just so I can look at it. And that is the TT30 plug. If you have an RV or you do off-roading or you're pulling a, a camper, something like the A-Free P280 in, in that plug is actually why I picked up this unit, the size and the plug. I love when a power station has a TT30 plug. In terms of this unit specifically, I really like the size of it. It is not super bulky. I've had other, you know, 2048 watt hour power stations that are physically a lot larger. They're physically more difficult to move. This has really nice handles. It's very easy to get a grip on it. It's very easy to move. 
It also included, and I'll throw an image up here on the screen, it included a very nice case to put all the cables in that, that it comes with, and those are cables to hook up to solar if you wanna charge this from solar panels or integrate this into a solar system. And it comes with a cover, which I really like. Look, a cover is not a make or break item, but it's a nice to have. So when you take this and you put it in your closet, you put it in the garage, you put it behind a couch until you need it. I also wanna point out that this unit and almost all power stations on the market today have this, but Jackery still has units that don't. Uh, this has lithium iron phosphate batteries. They do not have thermal runaway, so they're not gonna blow up and catch on fire. You can get roughly three to 5,000 charge cycles or 10 years before these batteries go to about 80%. So what I wanna do right now is take this power station and I'm gonna plug my refrigerator into it and I'm gonna plug a meter in so we can actually see how much power is used and we're just gonna let it run until the fridge you know, turns off because the battery has died. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the Afree P280, I brought it into the kitchen and I'm powering my full size refrigerator with it right now. We're at 100% battery capacity. I've plugged it in, but what I've done is I took my meter, we're getting 121.4 volts, 60 Hertz. That is absolutely perfect. That is what you wanna see. And we're just gonna let this run until the unit dies basically. So we will have a look at this once the unit is dead and we'll see how long it lasted, what the efficiency was. And this will be a real test for you guys to know how long can you expect to power a full size refrigerator with a 2048 watt hour battery. Okay guys, we're just checking in. It has been 11 and a half hours. We still have 71% uh, battery remain. And if we look at the meter, Right now, it says that we've actually been using power for six hours and 51 minutes out of those 11 and a half hours. The rest of that time, we have not been pulling any power because the refrigerator is not on a cooling cycle. Okay, we are back, it's the next day. It has been 28 hours and this AFRI unit, the P280, is still powering the fridge. We have 21% to go. I'm just gonna pull the camera in close so we can take a look at the screen and we're gonna just take a look at the meter here. Looking at the meter, it's telling us so far we've used 904 uh, kilowatt hours. So we've used basically 904 watt hours of the battery and that is to be expected. So considering how long this unit has been running and these units tend to be roughly 85% efficient, that tells me that we are using roughly maybe 18 watts of standby power to power the inverter, to power the screen, to power the fans when the fridge is not in a cooling cycle. So when the fridge is drawing no power, this is still using roughly 18 watts with the AC inverter on. And that is actually a very, very good number. I'm happy to see that. The good and the bad news is I'm probably gonna have to terminate this test because I'm going out later tonight. I'm estimating that this unit is going to run for about another 10 hours. That's gonna put us roughly around 38 hours of runtime for my full size fridge, which is amazing, but I'm not gonna be back home for probably 14 hours. So I don't want everything in my fridge to go bad. So we're gonna call the test, but I think we're gonna be safely looking at roughly 38 hours of runtime. And it's good to know this information because now if there's a power outage, I know roughly how long I can get on my fridge. That solves a lot of issues for me in terms of pre-planning, for an emergency. Guys, I hope this video was really helpful. Do me a favor, like and subscribe and leave some comments. If you've got questions about this unit, I will absolutely do my best to answer them. We've got a lot more content coming. I will see you on the next one.